and welcome to Munson Made This. My name is Michael. Welcome back if you've been here before. Welcome for the first time if you're brand new here. So you can click that subscribe button if you'd like and also click the thumbs up, click the bell notification. I haven't said that at the beginning in a while, but I probably should have. Anyway, today I'm back with a series of three delicious whole food plant-based recipes that all involve oats. Now a year or two ago, I did a, a series of recipes that were using steel cut oats. They were savory oat dishes. People love those, so I'm back doing more, but this time I'm just using rolled oats, so they're gonna cook even quicker. I have a delicious Korean-inspired gochujang oat dish with broccoli rabe. I have a delicious piccata dish with capers and lemon and some grilled mushrooms. And then finally, uh, I don't have another savory one. It's kind of a sweet one. It's a coconut banana chocolate pudding oat dish, which is so good. Um, these are all refined sugar-free. They're oil-free. They're full of flavor. So um, everything's gonna be happening behind me on the stove. So let's head back there. I have everything set up to do the gochujang oat dish. So let's start making that because I am hungry and I'm ready to eat. Here are all the ingredients for the Korean inspired gochujang oats. Here I actually have the gochujang and some Korean chili flake. Um, of course, oats, which uh, each of the recipes is going to have a half cup of oats. The savory ones are going to use some broth, a cup each of the broth. Um, I'm still going with my grain, a bean, a veggie, a green, and a seed. So my bean today is going to be... Um, well, my grain is oats. My bean today is going to be tofu, which is going to be mixed in there. My veggie is the broccoli rabe, which I'll show you in just a second. My green is this delicious Tokyo bacana, which is a great kind of bitter green. That'll come at the very end. I also have some green onion. The uh, white parts of the green onion will go in in the beginning. The green parts will go in at the end. Some delicious Thai basil, just for a little bit extra flavor bit of Bragg's liquid aminos, and then the very end of the dish, I'm gonna to top with some black vinegar, which is not Korean, and then some more chili flake and a bit of black sesame. So let's start throwing things into the pot. Most everything is just gonna kind of go in here and simmer together. Um, depending on the types of greens you have or the veggies you have, things might go in at different times, but pretty much we should be able to mix most of the things in, just kind of let it go and stir it risotto style. After about five minutes, we'll have a complete dish that we top, serve, ready to go. So let's add the broth first of all. Like I said, it's going to be about a half cup of oats to one cup of broth. Not sure why I'm pouring this so awkwardly. So broth goes in there. You may need a little bit more than one cup depending on what you're adding in there. Some things will add a little bit more liquid than others. Going to put in the oats. These are not quick cook. These are rolled or old fashioned oats. I'm going to put in the white part of green onion, just so that can cook along with the oats. I'm also going to add the tofu at this point. And then of course the gochujang and Korean chili paste. Now the, uh, or sorry, the uh, Korean chili flake. You could use a like, um, like an ancho chili powder if you weren't able to find Korean chili flake. I know that gochujang is available places even like Target and stuff now. Um, it does have, the one that I have actually does have um, corn syrup in it. So read the labels if you're avoiding like refined sugar. Like I said, these are refined sugar free, but um, if you're avoiding specific items, just read the ingredients and make sure you find one that doesn't have any ingredients that you're uh, avoiding. The last thing I wanna add is a bit of Bragg's liquid aminos, which is basically like a low sodium soy sauce. And this is pretty much it for right now. So I'm gonna let this come to a simmer. I'm gonna keep stirring it again, kind of risotto style. If it gets too dry, I'll add a little bit more broth. As soon as the oats uh, are the texture that I want, a couple minutes, um, I will start adding the remainder of the ingredients. We'll put it into a bowl, top it with the black vinegar, and we'll be ready to eat. I totally forgot I got so swept up in making the oats that I was gonna be serving this with broccoli rabe. So I have a griddle pan here and I've got some broccoli rabe that's rinsed off and I just wanna get this nice and charred. You could use regular broccoli. You could pretty much use any veggie that you want. I really like broccoli rabe and this is just gonna get a nice char to it, soften up a little bit. Obviously it's not gonna be stirred in with this at the end. We'll put the Tokyo Bacana in there. But um, this is just gonna be a nice kind of veggie, something hearty on the side as well. And it'll add just a bit of bitterness to the dish as well, just to balance things out. This will only take a couple of minutes. I just wanna get like a bit of a char. The oats are going great. They're just starting to barely simmer. The oats are starting to absorb some of the liquid. We're in great shape. It's been just about three minutes. I have turned over the broccoli rabe. I'm going to give 
the oats uh, taste just to see how the texture is, see how the flavor is. We're in great shape. I don't need to add any more broth, um, but I'm gonna add in my Tokyo Bacana. Again, this is just a green. This is, I'm adding it at the end like as you would spinach. If I were using kale, which I will be using in the next dish, um, I'll add that at the very beginning so that it can cook down with the oats the entire time. I'm also gonna add a bit of green onion, not all of it, because I wanna save some for the top. And then I'll actually save the uh, Thai basil for the top as well. So as soon as the Tokyo Bacana is, I, I hope I'm saying that right, I don't know, it came in with my CSA and I've been kind of in love with it. I'd never heard of it before, but I've been really enjoying cooking it and eating it. But as soon as that's wilted down, the dish is ready to go. Uh, like I said, I flipped over the broccoli, uh, the rob, and it's probably ready to go as well. Yep, we've got some great color on there, so I think we're ready to eat. I have a bowl ready here that this is going to go in. So let me pour my gochujang oats in here. Make sure to get them all. It's kind of impressive how much oats actually grow. The fact that it was just like a half cup of oats and we have this delicious, huge bowl of food. I'm just going to grab some of this broccoli rob. Just kind of drape it over the side. Has a nice char smell and flavor. Just a nice contrast, a good amount of bitterness. And then we're going to top with the green onions. Lots of green onions with this dish. Some of the Thai basil, and I just had this on hand, so that's why I'm adding it, but it does add a ton of flavor to this dish. If I could actually tear it. And then the last thing is some black sesame seeds and some more of the curry and chili flake. And there we have our tofu and broccoli rob gochujang style, or I guess Korean style gochujang oats. Right, delicious. Half cup of oats, and we have this delicious, incredible, flavorful dish. It is now time to make the piccata version. This is gonna be served with some oyster mushrooms and I had a zucchini that I needed to cook up. So I have my griddle hot and I'm just gonna put these on there. I've thinly sliced them and done a little bit of a cross hatch. So I'm just gonna place these on the griddle pan and these can go, they're just gonna probably cook a little bit longer than the oats. So that's why I wanna get these started first. Um, again, you could use pretty much any veggie you'd want with this. You don't even need to add an extra veggie. I just kind of like the addition of something else on the side, just for a little bit more texture, just makes it more of a meal. So these are going to cook for a few minutes on each side. I don't really need to worry about them. If they smell like they're burning, I'll flip them over. So let's move over to the pot and start adding the ingredients for the oats. Um, I'm just gonna tell you what I have as I add them to the pot. So I have same broth, and this is actually, if you're noticing it being kind of a dark color, this is the broth, I made this uh, in the Instant Pot. It's basically like stock made from leftover veggies. So that's onion skins that made it that color. And I did add a little bit of bouillon to it to boost up the flavor. So that's my scrap stock. Half cup of oats. My bean in this one is going to be chickpeas. You could use pretty much any type of bean you would like. It's great with white beans. Instead of adding what I had green onion last time, I have shallot and some garlic because we're kind of going for an Italian style flavor here. So that's one clove of garlic and a small shallot. Last time we added the Tokyo Bacana at the end, I'm adding the kale at the beginning. Probably won't add all of this because that is a ton. And then, um, as I said, it's gonna be a lemon caper flavor profile. So at the end, I will add the capers and I will add a squeeze of lemon and then these will be served on the side. So this just needs to come up to a simmer. The oats will cook, the kale will wilt down, the chickpeas will warm through and it'll be delicious. The oats are simmering nicely and I am just flipping over these mushrooms and zucchini. Uh, again, the zucchini wasn't necessarily a part of the dish, the dish in the beginning. I just decided to add them because I needed to use it. But it's all about the mushrooms. You could use any mushroom that you like. It's weird how unevenly this pan heats. 
So this is gonna go for a couple more minutes. I'm gonna continue to stir the oats. They're absorbing the flavor. The kale is coming down and it'll get creamier. It'll get more kind of like a risotto texture here very soon. So this is pretty much ready to go. I can tell just by seeing it, it's gotten a little bit creamier. I have added a bit more broth. So this has been going for quite a few minutes. I can see visually that this is pretty much ready to go. I do want to test it just to make sure the oats are cooked. They still got a little bit of a chew, nice al dente. I love that. Um, these are definitely done. I turned the heat off on these, so they're ready to go. The last thing I want to do here is add my polarizing capers. And then I'm gonna add just a squeeze of lemon juice now, trying to not get any seeds in. All right, and I'll also serve it with a bit more lemon. Mm, such a great flavor. All right, so I'm gonna head over to the island and I'll show you how I plate this up. The piccata oats are done and I'm just adding them to my dish here, which is somewhere between a bowl and a plate. And I'm just gonna kinda spread it out a little bit. It'll make it look like a larger portion, which is still quite a big portion. But again, just have about a, a half cup of oats half cup of cooked chickpeas. And now I'm just going to add the mushrooms and zucchini on top. Let's just put them in the middle. Something like that. I think it looks good. So it's just oats, but now it has this appearance of being like a restaurant style dish like a really delicious risotto, but we're pretty much just eating our oatmeal. So that is it. That is our piccata oats with mushrooms and zucchini. This is the last one. This could be a dessert or a breakfast. Of course, we have our half cup of oats. The secret ingredient with this is a frozen banana. And yes, we are cooking this dish, but the frozen banana is nice because it's going to just kind of disintegrate inside and this is going to become the source of sweetness in this dish, along with some raisins, because this is a chocolate pudding. We also have some cocoa powder. I have some chunky peanut butter. You could use whatever kind of peanut butter you like. Some coconut flakes that'll go on top. Little bit of coconut extract for a little bit more coconut flavor. And then we'll finish it off at the end, which is a little bit of almond milk. So let's start adding everything. Uh, except for the coconut flakes and the milk to this, we'll bring it up to a simmer. Same thing as last time, just keep stirring. We'll taste it for seasoning at the end. If you do want this to be a little bit sweeter, because it's not the most sweet of dishes, you could add a little bit of maple syrup or a little bit of agave to boost the sweetness, but I kind of like the level of sweetness that this dessert or breakfast has. So there's the banana, there's the water. You could also use uh, plant milk at this point also. I just think the water is easier. The oats cocoa powder and raisins. And uh, actually, well, I'll put the um, coconut extract in as well. You could use vanilla extract or whatever kind of flavor profile you wanted to go for. Um, the peanut butter is actually gonna be going in at the very end. Just a small bit, I don't wanna overpower it. Oops. Um, the peanut butter is actually gonna go in at the very end. Once this is all come together as the texture that I want, I will stir in the peanut butter and that'll just add like a rich creaminess at the very end, and then uh, we can thin it out with the uh, almond milk if we need to. So right now the banana is frozen solid, but as it melts, it's just going to completely disintegrate into the oats. If you didn't have a frozen banana on hand, just make sure that you're using a really ripe banana. Mash it up really well before adding it. But the great thing about it being frozen is the freezing process just kind of breaks all the cells in things. So as it melts and comes back to temperature or gets heated up in this case, it's just going to completely melt into the oats. And you can see it kind of, well, you can't really see it, but it's happening already. And it's gonna make these oats so creamy and uh, it's gonna be our source of sweetness in addition to the raisins. It's been just about four minutes. The banana is completely gone. It's a part of the oats now. It smells incredible. And I'm going to be adding my peanut butter. And if you 
don't want to use peanuts, you could use almond butter or whatever your favorite nut butter is, or leave it out altogether if you wanted to make this lower fat. If you didn't want to put in the coconut extract also, I've added coconut milk to this before, and that's really good. And uh, as soon as you add that peanut butter, it does melt in there, but it also kind of thickens the oats up a little bit. And um, I'm gonna add just a tiny little bit of almond milk just to keep things a little bit looser. And then this is ready to go. Again, if you wanted it any sweeter, you could add whatever your sweetener of choice is. Uh, I think it's got a nice, like, because it's not too sweet, it has a really nice dark chocolate quality to it, and I, and I really enjoy that. So I'm gonna put this into my bowl, top it with a little bit of coconut flake, and then I'm ready to eat this. These chocolate, coconut, banana, peanut oats are th all done. I was <laughs> going to use this ladle to try to make it look a little bit nicer, but it ended up going oh, okay. So let me put that ladle down, make sure again to get all of this out of here. We've worked for all of these oats. And this just has such a great, like if you've ever eaten warm chocolate pudding, that's exactly the experience here. And then the last thing I want to do, I should have toasted these coconut flakes, but it's just coconut flakes. And I'm going to add a little bit on top just to drive home that coconut flavor. And there we have our, there's so many things, chocolate, peanut, banana, coconut, oats. Anyways, it's delicious, warm chocolate pudding. You're gonna enjoy this one. Admittedly, I have not been the biggest fan of oats in my life. I'm not like an oatmeal for breakfast kind of person, but when I realized that I could use oats as a grain and have a meal in like five or 10 minutes, I seriously fell in love with oats. So I've got three incredible dishes here. You could eat them all in one day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is the piccata oats topped with mushrooms and zucchini full of delicious kale and chickpeas. I have my dessert slash breakfast version here with coconut flake and chocolate and peanut butter and banana, super rich and delicious. And finally the gochujang oats, the Korean inspired with delicious broccoli rabe, full of Thai basil, green onion, and of course our main source of protein in there is tofu. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do wanna see more oat recipes, let me know. I'll also have a link up here somewhere to the previous video. If you wanna make any of these with the steel cut oats instead of the rolled oats like this, um, you could use those formulas and just substitute in these flavors as well. So thanks to everyone for watching and I will see you next time with a brand new recipe video. Actually next time will probably be a weight loss update because that's still going and uh, I need to update you on how that situation is going. So thanks again. Thanks to my subscribers and people on Patreon. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.